building a forging press. I had an initial plan on this, um, plan, we'll call it plan A should we? So plan A I kicked off, I got some steel which I've had for about a year now, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, and last week I stripped all the paint off that, cleaned it down, got it looking beautiful. And that was, oh, that was plan A steel, RSJ. It's, uh, I don't know what the, it's not mild steel, put it that way. It's a, it's a step up from mild steel. It was some kind of tracking off, um, off a big old industrial building. So I cleaned all this up, cut it to length, all the pieces, uh, ready for welding and my stuff arriving. And then, while I was <laughs> and then, while I was working away, the power pack arrived and the hydraulic ram arrived on the same day. So I got back, and when I saw the hydraulic ram, <laughs> I thought, no, it's not going to do. It's no way. Oh no, 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 no. The steel is just no. So. Yesterday, or the day before, I went and I got this. A big old 8x5 RSJ. And I went to a fairly localish steel suppliers. Uh, big yard, massive yard, acres and acres of steel. Never seen as much steel in my entire life. But, uh, so I went there, got a little clip I took of the actual bandsaw cutting this. I'll put that in now. Right there. Uh, and this was Neil doing the cutting for me. Neil the Steel as I nicknamed him. <laughs> Neil Neil Man of Steel. So yeah, I mean they were chatting while uh, while the you know, RSJs were cutting. And then my next challenge was ordering an inverter to run the motor because I'll show you the motor it is a monster it's a five horsepower three phase and it's a big old thing that is heavy um, and my invert then yesterday my inverter came and I honestly didn't think this was gonna work but it does so I wired it up last night and pressed run. And that is our five horse, three phase. This run up time is it's set maybe a little slow. I may shorten that to just increase the the actual run up speed. To me. That doesn't seem to be spinning fast enough, but uh, I've sent for a little tachometer to just check the speed of this. I may have some settings wrong in the in the VFD, but uh, something I need to check. It's supposed to spin at 14, 1450 RPM. I'm not. Sh that doesn't seem. That doesn't look like 1450 to me. Do you want to eyeball the cylinder? This is why I decided that plan A was not going to work. So we needed a plan B. Uh, it's a five inch, it's five inch cylinder with 300 mil of stroke. I'm only going to, I'm going to set this up so I've got about a seven inch gap between my dies. So this cylinder really is never going to move more than seven inches. I need to mount that motor onto the uh, pump, fill it with hydraulic fluid and test out this ram. All them cross now. Don't even know if this is going to be successful. This is a 29 ton ram um, and the way this is set up it should give me 20 tons of squashiness with uh, 
with a speed of about one inch of travel per second on the on the actual cylinder on the actual ram um, whether that happens or not I don't know because I don't think that motor's quite set up right yet but anyway let's uh, I'm going to connect this up and see what happens well that's kind of it there's a control valve I've put some I put 20 litres of hydraulic oil in it I don't think that's enough because when it it starts to fill the ram it's going to empty this reservoir so I'm guessing I'm probably going to need about another 10, 5 or 10 litres of oil but I'm going to fire it up, switch it on see what happens I don't know <laughs> I don't know what the bar is this this is going to run maximum 180 bar no more than that so we are over there just under 3000 PSI so I'm going to switch on see what happens I do know that the <coughs> I do know that the uh, the bar pressure needs adjusting on the back of the pump there, but uh, I don't know. Let's we'll see what happens first. I don't even know if the hoses are the correct orientation. I don't know which way the, is the flow and the return on this yet. There's no arrows on it. Yeah, it should make a good video anyway if it all blows up. Yes, it's, uh, it's low on oil now. The reservoirs run right down as it's filled this cylinder. Uh, I'll have to have a play around with it. I shall come back. So I've laid the RSJ out on my saw table because I know this is dead flat. Because I wanted to get all these. What I, want it, what I absolutely need is these two faces parallel and square. Because uh, that is the... That is what the uh, RSJ is going to slide up and down in. So th this is going to be bang on. Whatever else is on the sides of this is fairly irrelevant. And you can see that these things are not, they're not symmetrical, these RSJs. If you now put a straight edge across them, you can see a gap there. You put them across there, you've got a... Put that across there, you've got a gap there, you level them two off, you're hitting that one and you're over that one. So I couldn't, I couldn't just lay these on, on this flat table because both sides were slightly out. So what I've done, I've clamped everything up. These are, these are dead square, these small blocks. Um, and everything there is perfectly parallel and square. It's beautiful. So that will give me a nice clean mating sliding surface for my uh, 
for my squashiness <laughs> thing. I'm gonna it's got me MIG welder, but my MIG welder ain't so big. So I'm gonna use my arc welder on this because I've just I've just done a little test there with my arc welder and I'll be able to get a much nicer, bigger bed like that with the arc welder on. So that's fairly thick stuff and it does that without any problem. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to tack it together on here, on this bench. I'm just going to weld up in this webbing a few good, a few good runs to, just to hold all this together. Then I'm going to turn the thing round and square this end up and clamp that up and do the same there then. I'm going to take it all outside and get it all welded up. There, it kind of gives you a bit of a visual lift. Just welded that up. It's nice and parallel and totally square. And there's the ram that's going to go inside. I'm going to lay this monkey down now. Get her welded up. Well, I'm happy with them welds. Uh, they good, thick, strong weld. And I know I've welded each side of that web. Um, and I know that's not going to move. My next task <coughs> is to cut this 8mm thick steel plate which is I don't know what's that three eighths or something like that somewhere around, somewhere around there but anyway I've got to cut that to fit inside that webbing I'll put a couple of little blocks in there or some tacks of weld just to hold that uh, in place I'm going to run a weld round this is the top of the the actual press um, and I'll need a little lock kind of lock collar, swinging lock collar. So I'll just have to put another piece on the front of there which I can then um, drill a hole and tap it to take a bolt to hold that little lo locking collar in place. So I'll cut two of them. There's one for each side. I'm going to weld them in. And then when that is welded up um, going to clean these faces up here just get that bit of mill scale off and just run a file across and just get it as flat as I can and as smooth as I can just ready ready for this operation that'll all be greased up so I think I'm, I'm going to leave it there for now guys and I will come back uh, when I've got all this welding done um, when I've got some legs welded on the bottom of this uh, because the legs or the bot, the base of this thing is going to have casters on it uh, and it's also going to house the hydraulic pack which will be, it'll kind of be a part of it. I was thinking that this was going to be really noisy in which case I would have housed that somewhere else, that the hydraulic pack and run longer hoses too but I don't, I don't need to do that. It's uh, perfectly acceptable and no noisier than the compressor which operates my other press so uh, thanks for sticking with me um, I'll be back a couple of days get a bit more welding done um, thanks to you patron chaps all my patron guys I appreciate you following me and supporting me I really do um, and I will be back in the next few days oh one thing my buddy Rick Rab John uh, You'll find his channel on YouTube, Rick Rab John. He's on Forged in Fire. I think it is next week, the 20th, maybe the 24th or something like that. About a Wednesday anyway. He's on the he's in the tournament series. He's one of the metal workers on the last episode of the four. So Rick <laughs> Rick is on that. No spoilers. Uh, so uh tune in and watch Rick and go go over to Rick. He's got a little piece on his channel there if you if you're interested in uh, forged in fire um and i will see you soon <laughs> okay guys bye for now